Dynamic blessings to all of you today, and welcome to uh, Michael B. Beckwith, IG Live. It's a great day. Some of you are probably already wondering what's on my hat. The hat says life is good, because fundamentally life is magnificent. And we're not talking about your experience of life. We're talking about life with a capital L. Never compromises itself, never contradicts its own nature. It is beyond the human concept of good. It's always progressive. So I have hats, and I've, I've been saying for 30, 40 years that life is good. Now welcome. Today we're going to be with Brother Keith Mitchell. Many of you may know who he is, and if you don't, he's a former all-pro NFL football player turned internationally renowned celebrity yogi, motivational mindfulness coach, holistic health and fitness advocate, community activist, and humanitarian. He's the founder of Light It Up Foundation. He's the author of Mindfulness Playbook. You may have seen him featured in USA Today, Sports Illustrated, Essence, Yoga Journal, The Huffington Post, One World with Deepak Chopra, and numerous other national media outlets. We're talking about Keith Mitchell. We're gonna pull him on right this moment. And we will welcome him with a great deal of love. Brother Keith. Hey, what's going on? So great to be here with you. It's always good to be with you. I, I see that great smiling face, and I can't help but remember our time we traveled together in Egypt, the land of Kemet. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I will never forget that trip. And, you know, actually, I, I got a little souvenir that I've been rocking ever since I got back from that trip. So it's, it's, as, soon as, I, <laughs> as soon as I saw it, it just went, I went right back to Kemet. And, and interestingly enough, uh, I, I think I may have gone back again if it wasn't for COVID, because I go every other year. Right. You know, I go to some uh, country on the continent of Africa. And then the next year, I go back to Kemet, so I like to bounce back and forth. I always like to touch the soil every year, you know? Definitely. And, uh, so COVID has kept me, you know, in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For this particular period of time. But I, that was a great, insightful trip. Oh, yeah. And so, it was, it was so uh, And people don't understand that when you go there and you go to parts of Africa, that energy moves through you for years. Yes. You know, and when you think about that trip, how did that impact you? Ah, uh, man, it was just a continuation of what I had been, you know, stepping into uh, since I transitioned from being in the in the sport world. Uh, I had been to Ghana previously, so this was my second venture out there to to the motherland. And uh, man, it was just to to immerse in it. I think we were there for a month. I mean, just to take it all in and the education that we got from you know, your brother there. And, you know, it, it was just an amazing trip that forever changed my life. And I am, I was supposed to go back in April and uh, uh, due to COVID uh, that was postponed. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I have to get home and, and, and get uh, rejuvenated once a year at least. So I'm with you on that. Yeah, that energy is fantastic. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Keith just mentioned my brother's name is Akili Beckwith. And he is a... Uh, an expert, you know, if you can call that, he's an individual yes. that really embraces the, the, secret, the sacred teachings of Kemet and has gone, my brother's probably gone to Kemet 20 or 30 times. Wow. You know, wow. I've gone about six or seven. Yeah. He's gone about 20 or 30 times. So he really has immersed himself in that, in that teaching. And uh, so thank you for bringing him up. But let's, yes. those of you don't know who you are, let's talk about your transition because you were an all pro and you were a linebacker, right? Yes, yes. That means that means you were a mean something, something. I mean, you. I was you, doing you, the hunting. You were you, <laughs> you were the hunter, man. <laughs> and dealing with those big backs coming out of the backfield, and and uh, so here you were, all pro. Uh, were you a middle linebacker? I played it all. I played, played from all. all the. I played them all. I even put my hand in the dirt, and played defensive end on certain packages. I was just like. I, you know, I was very athletic. I'm like, was past since. I'm still pretty athletic. <laughs> but uh, I, I could just, I could be mobile. I was about 260 at that time. And I, I had, I ran about a 4.40. Uh, uh, that was my speed. Those who know football can relate four to that. 4.4? Four, four? Oh, 
Okay. That's at 260. Lazy. At 260. That's lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I covered them all. I covered receivers, running backs, and then I got to bang with the big boys in there. And, uh, you know, you know, life happened. Life brought me back to a reality, if you will. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, we don't have supernatural bones, even though the muscles can look so big and broad, but we still right. have these, the same ligaments that you have, the same uh, bones, and they can only take so much. Um, and my eighth season, um, when I was, I played six years in New Orleans, a year in Houston, then I went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, you know, we were playing the Buffalo Bills, making a tackle I had made a million times. Uh, I was anticipating to play. Last time I played uh, against this particular quarterback, uh, Drew Bledsoe, I had scored a touchdown when I anticipated a play that he was going to do. And I knew they were going to isolate me on the backside. And uh, my thought was to take and get the interception. If I came up short of that, the, the, the least thing I was going to do is put my forehead, the crown of my head, into the chest of that running back. So right. uh, on this particular play, I end up on my back after the collision. We have a big collision. I'm, in, I'm on my back. And I'm like, you know, Keith, get up. And my body's not responding. I'm like, Keith, come on, move, get up, you know. And I'm in that in that vulnerable position, you know. And um, and I had never felt that or any type of anything like that in my life. It's like one of those things where you know you're in trouble, but you can't feel a thing. Right. And uh, I was there. <laughs> and and I, the the first thing when they came, I was like, get me out of here. That was my first notion because I had been that gladiator. And, right. you know, vulnerability is something that we just don't show. I'm like, get me out of here. This is, I can't be seen like this. You know, 80,000 right. in the stands, millions watching. And after 45 minutes of being there, I realized I wasn't, I was in a predicament. And, uh, you know, I was later on diagnosed with a spinal contusion. I suffered paralysis from my, my cervical spine to basically the whole right side of my body, my cervical to lumbar to my, my, my extremities, my legs, the right side of my body, I couldn't move. And uh, through that, I had my own quarantine before the quarantine. Right. And, uh, you know, it was one of the most, uh, I don't know, just, you know how sometimes we can take a, a, a misfortune as we, you know, think of it in hindsight. But on the back end of that, it was a tremendous blessing because it's allowed me to be and grow into this, uh, this individual, this, this human that I have blossomed into. And I'm grateful for that, for this journey. Right. Now, you had to re rehabilitate yourself, and that's when you came into a greater awareness of the yoga practices and the mindfulness practices. That was kind of your, your foundational piece to help bring you back, right? Exactly. Um, a nurse, ironically, in, in, um, in a, a session, uh, uh, she taught me about conscious breathing. She's like, do you know what happens when you breathe? And I had never contemplated the idea of what happens when I breathe. And she said, on the inhale, the diaphragm pushes down on the exhale, it, it moves up. And about 10,000 breaths we take a day uh, through this process, we can contribute to our healing. And by doing so, we begin to move uh, and circulate the, the, the nutrition that runs through the blood. It allows that to circulate that oxygen through these areas that are kind of hard to reach. And so that was for me like a, a, a tweaking of my, my mind for where I was at that time. And it, it, it allowed me, enabled me to realize that I can contribute to my own healing here. If I put this into an application, and that's how it's wired, give me the playbook and let me execute, hence the mindfulness playbook. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. And so, uh, obviously, you went down that rabbit hole of conscious breathing, and, and obviously, you still practice that. Yes, yes, and, and, and how I teach it, because uh, sometimes, you know, we, you know, just the nature of our environment, we like to put things in boxes, so I, I create a nice box for it, and, and from the standpoint of human development, uh, it's a human growth development. When I breathe, uh, I'm more intentional. I'm, I'm less reactive. You know, when we're in that survival mode, we're breathing in that shallow breath. You know, and you, we talked about anxiousness earlier. It's just not enough oxygen to the blood, to, to the brain. So when I can breathe and I can slow things down, my thoughts are running together. I can just slow things down. Now I can, I can go forward. I can navigate with more of an intention. And so through, over time, it begins to, because we're all about patterns, we're, 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 we're made up of a lot of patterns. So through that process, now I begin to uh, build an emotional maturity, you know, uh, right. through this right. process. And, and so I teach yoga as like, hey, you got this body that you've had an expectation of for so long, but have you ever been formally introduced to it? <laughs> it. Here's your ankle, here's your hamstring, here's your quad. 
Now meet it. And, and in gratitude, like we say a lot of things in, in formality, you know, we talk gratitude, but not gratitude as a as wording, but gratitude as like, listen, here it is right here. Here you are right here. And I acknowledge right. you. And I'm grateful for you, not by right. just words, but by actions. So that's the investment that I'm encouraging everyone to contribute to that we can do right now, right this moment, uh, going forward. Absolutely. You know, uh, people sometimes ask me, you know, before when I'm about to speak, you know, I'll close my eyes and I'm doing some things. They want to know what I'm doing. I said, well, first of all, I'm going to a state of prayer meditation. And then I start to consciously breathe, you know, and I, and I, yeah. the, the, the two breaths that I do before I get up to speak, I'll do the breath of fire, you know, about 40, you know, fast breaths. And then I slow it down and I do a, a, a eight count in, hold it for eight count out, hold it for. I do that about eight or nine times. So mm -hmm. by the time I go up to speak, I've been in my meditative spot, but I've also consciously breathed, pulled the prana out of the air to flood my body. Yeah. And then my thought is much more coherent. I'm, a, I'm more available for what the spirit wants to say. Yeah. It's about to, you know, I, I, of course I do it every day, but I'm doing it right before I speak all the time. It's just like, yeah. that's what I'm doing. And it, it, people can even come up and talk to me or they say something to me and I'm still in the zone. I'm still, I can hear them, I can respond, but I'm still doing my inner work, you know, I'm still moving like that. And, and so you're giving some really good um, tips here. And I think it's very important because you said something about, you know, something along the lines of not being scattered and slowing your, your, your mind down. And this is probably very important during this time when people are so anxious, yes. they're nervous, they're nervous about COVID, they're nervous about the upcoming election, they're nervous about the polarization that's happening on, our, on the world, in the world and in our country. And if you can't have a level of coherence around yourself, then you can't make right choices and right decisions. You can't, you'll be reacting to everything rather yes. than responding from that deeper place. So what you're giving today, this is very powerful. I appreciate mm. it. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. And, and, you know, I have to give it back to you because when I met, if you, if, I don't know if you remember, in 2015, we were at this event, uh, I Lee 2015, uh, yeah. the Four Seasons in Dallas. My mother was there. And I, I actually mentioned, because my mother didn't know who you were, I was like, well, that's like the T.D. Jakes in Los Angeles on the West Coast. <laughs> so, uh, A metaphysical T.D. Jakes. <laughs> But, but, but my point of saying that to you, man, is that I appreciate you and I want, I want the people, I want you to realize that coming from me to you. I, you're a pioneer in this. And, and when I first heard of you through The Secret, man, I was just blown away by just the way you articulate yourself, your mannerisms, the whole dynamic that you show up with. And it was, it's just an honor to have this engagement with you, not just when we first met and when we were in Kemet, but actually as we've grown, I've seen you grow and, and hopefully you've seen me grow a little bit. <laughs> and oh, just to be in. Absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely, man. I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I, I appreciate the work you've done on yourself. I appreciate what you're offering to the world. Because, you know, when I, when I was, you know, I've been doing this for 40 years. Yes. You know, I started Agape 34 years ago and I was an oddball. You know, I was considered weird. And, you know, the diet, I raised my kids vegetarian and vegan. And, you know, I was doing conscious breathing and meditating and I was teaching all this stuff. But I took a lot of slings and arrows from the traditional churches saying that I was, you know, I won't even get into what they called me. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in good standing with my Christian church. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, so to see, to, to see now people like you and others coming along and really taking that mantle and, and, and embracing the yogic practices and the meditation and the mindfulness and, and, and the nutrition and, and all of that, you know, I've lived long enough to see this become somewhat popular. You know what yeah. I mean? Whereas before, I used to make a joke. I used to say, you know, people would, would, would rather, you know, they, they put a cover over their book. They didn't, they, didn't want anybody, they didn't want anybody to know what they were reading. But oftentimes, people didn't want to, to know if they were reading a metaphysical book. They would rather say they were reading porn than reading <laughs> physics because they yeah. were embarrassed by this weird, exotic stuff. Yeah. Now, it's in the mainstream, you know? Yeah. And then we have people like you who have a powerful testimony. I mean, you were paralyzed, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I imagine the prognosis wasn't that good. No, but you know, the doctors were like, we don't know if you're going to, you know, walk or be able to play, things like this, and, you know, and 
speaking of the conditioning, I had been, you know, I had been a part of that whole, you know, mentality that the doctors knew everything. They had all the answers. So when it was time for them to give me the answers, I was stuck because I'm like, he didn't have an answer for me. What do you right. do? And, uh, you know, so I was in a predicament. And then there's a lot of, in a lot of cases also, they wanted to uh, do types of uh, surgeries, operations on me. And they didn't sound certain, like they knew what they were. And I was like, no, we, we're not going to do this. This is not what I'm going to go with, this direction. And not even knowing uh, where it was going to, you know, my role was going to end, but I, it, it led me on the journey of healing. And right. so I found, I began to search out uh, healing experts, especially when I got more functional after a month being quarantined in my home, which brought about a lot of reflections that I, I really want people to really indulge in in, this, in in these moments to reflect and question yourself, question my life, question my relationships. Where was I standing in, in these pr pr dynamics that I was putting myself in? And like, how could I uh, make them better? The relationships, you know, moving from the, the surface to, to having more in depth type relationships with my, my, the people I've said I love. You know, I begin to put all those things to question. And I begin to realize, okay, as I see myself going forward, these are the, these are the, the, the tweaking that I want to make happen in my life. And again, it, it, it just led, because the things we're talking about, when you were talking about before you go out and, and, and do your sermon, uh, nutrition is information. Right. The information that we're allowing ourselves to come in is, is, is going to be the immunity. The immunity is, is the, 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 uh, the basic element that helps us navigate through this planet. And, you know, it's how the human body is made up. And I began to search out uh, phenomenal teachers like a Dr. Sebi. You know, right. I, I tell people I've, I've been in his home 10 times, like just learning, hands in the dirt, trying to learn from this master teacher who just like you in, in these times where it wasn't heard of telling people not to eat meat. Can you imagine what they were saying to him if, <laughs> if they're yeah, talking to you, you know, about quantum and, physics? <laughs> absolutely. He left way too soon. I don't even know if he left of his own accord. But, but yeah, yeah I, I still take Dr. Sebi's herbs. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a part, it's a part of my, it's a part of my regimen. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely, but just learning about it and like things that I thought I knew, because you know, I'm all this, you know, I've been this, you know, muscle bound individual, 4%, 5% body fat, thinking I know it, everything. I put that on the chef because right. what, I, what I knew got me to the predicament that I was in. So I must know more. I need to learn more. So I began to apply myself in all these dynamics, whether it be a yoga, whether it be a meditation, uh, nutrition, things of that nature, to, for the last 16 years, dive into and learn it, like learn it as, as a novice, to learn right. it to what I, I have and understand now. So I'm totally grateful. Yeah, but you said something very important. You learned it as a novice. And I think uh, we stay lifelong learners. You know, we stay even though we know more than we did yesterday and more know more than what we did five years ago, we stay with that novice kind of mind. It's like a, a beginner's mind always available to not only our own spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment, but became available to new insights coming all the time. And that's how you stay young. Yes. You don't, once you get into know it all, I know it all, then you start to age. Yes. You know, the beginner's mind dissolves. You think you know everything. You become just a walking an opinion, you mm -hmm. know, but you don't become available to fresh, fresh insights. So walk us through your process. You're paralyzed. The nurse says to you, there's something called conscious breathing. Conscious breathing, yes. Then how do you finally get to your yoga practice? Well, yoga came for me about probably a, a year after that. Uh, because it, it begins to, when, when, you, when you talk about breathing, uh, and again, detaching from the thoughts, the mind goes clutter. And when, when the body doesn't, what I realized with anger and these types of emotions, well, the body, when it doesn't know what to do, it gets angry. It goes into like the computer when it's trying to process so much information, it starts spinning. And so we start spinning. We call it stuck. <laughs> and in a lot of cases, <laughs> it's not just stuck in our minds. It's also uh, the stress and the, the anxiousness that we're feeding our bodies. Right. You know, we, we, we we're building these cemeteries in our bellies right. and, 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 and we're stimulating ourselves with all this, this, these, these synthetic things that, you know, got us moving like, like crackheads in a sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, we're, and we're wondering why we can't sit still. So my point is, I begin to learn how to work with my body, listen to my body. I tell everyone, like, I learned how to push my body past limits. 
but I never learned to listen to my body when I began to go into the meditations to be the observer, to, to realize what is my body telling me and how can I listen? And, doesn't, and the thing about the body, and you know, it sounds uh, very adolescent, but the body doesn't have a mouth to speak with. So it speaks through sensations. So we yeah. must feel. <laughs> which allows us to be more human. And right. so now, now I also have to feed this humanness. So by feeding my, the humanness, it's, a, it's a, a dynamic within me that's allowed me to rejuvenate. You know, it's like, it's a whole dynamic that goes together with this process that allows us to be more human so we can be receptive to the healing that's all available to us all around us. Yeah, it's, it, that's the thing that people don't get. It's available all the time for everyone. And when you had the, 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 the privilege and the insight to do, you stepped out of the prognosis of your medical doctor and you stepped into a whole nother quantum field of all things possible. Yes. And yes. many people are afraid to do that. As you said, you know, when you went in, the doctors know everything, they're going to give me my answers. You stepped out of that dynamic, not that you threw away medicine, but you stepped out of that and said, well, there's, there's more. Yes. There's more. There's, there's things they don't even know. Yes. And, and that led you to you know where you are today in terms of uh, teaching these dynamics and then and then okay so now you're now you're a yoga practitioner after about a year when did you start to look at nutrition supplements and diet as a part of this healing process well the diet came after you know so it began to be meditation for me get my mind of realizing the emotions and how i can control the emotions be more in the present state uh, like you mentioned, the zone, then I got into yoga, the dynamic of like, you know, and, and the reason why yoga is so interesting, because we can't, through the knowledge, we can't liberate ourselves by just knowledge, you know, the library that we collect in our heads, we have to have a, a, an implication, it has to be a tangible, like we have to feel we have to embody this dynamic. So you must go through the body, you know, you must right. go and have the experience in the body. And this awakening, what I realized, a lot of the things that I had been compartmentalized, was still within me. And, and when you're talking about healing, those are gonna be the things that inhibit you from healing. And so I had to go like that, with take, like that, you know, the doctor, I had to be my own doctor with my own scalpel and go and dig some of this stuff up that was hidden within me. And so how that looked for me before I even knew that the concepts of yoga, I was basically, cause I was confined, I had this in, in Texas. Well, I had three homes at that time and I had this big house in Texas, but I was confined to one room. And so I had them lay me, you know, mostly I was on the floor and I had all these pillows and I just found myself stacking these pillows and just laying over these different pill pillows. We call that yin yoga, uh, as I know now, but I began to just lay in these different postures and just breathe, knew the breathing that I was doing. And I began to apply that breathing into the areas of my body and connect to this dynamic. And so through this process, I would have breakdowns and I realized that I had to forgive myself. My body was in a state that it was like, I don't trust you. I had this I had this relationship that I thought was within myself, but it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't tight. It wasn't it, it, you know, it was just like a superficial one. And I was going for substance because I realized I had to unleash all that baggage to allow me to take flight. And uh, right. that was my practice. And I, I had breakdowns. I, I would have breakdowns because a lot of the, the hits that I had forgotten mentally, my body remembered it all. And I was, and it's like I was going through this, like, uh, if you can think of a, this, this block of ice just thawing, I was that block of ice. And as I would begin to melt with this breathing, I began to melt away the things that I was just holding in my body. And so from that, I went and found, yeah, I'm, yeah. I was on YouTube, I was on YouTube and, and, I, and I was like searching up, I don't know, different diets and cleansing, because I was on a cleansing regimen as well. And then I saw this, this man who, who, who had my skin tone talking about nutrition. And he was all the way in Honduras. I'm like, okay, where is he in Honduras? I said, I gotta go find, I'm feeling led, I need to go find him. And he was in the Amazon. So I'm like, okay, I had to, I'm mean, talking about planes, trains, and automobiles to go find Dr. Sabi. And one of the first conversations he had with me, he's like, you know, he had this really uh, strong voice, alpha voice. He's like, humans cannot process animal DNA. That was the first conversation he had, you know, and being from Texas, I'm like, we ate steak, you know, things like that. But I'm like, OK, that's what you said. I'm, I'm going cold turkey. Let, let's go. <laughs> because it wasn't about you know, I couldn't negotiate what he was saying. I was like, I looked at who he was, his record, 
and what he had been doing. I had read on researched him and I knew this man was like, he, he knew what he was talking about. And so I was like, I was open to the, like, you know, we mentioned earlier, I was open to the, the message. So I take, I took it in and I allowed it to, to, to process through me. And I, and I took it on and it's forever changed my life. Well, that's powerful. You, you said some powerful things. I want to, want to circle back so that people really hear what you said, you know, uh, one, when you were doing the breathing, you would place your attention on parts of the body. And, and take, placing your attention on parts of the body, you would be like observing and sending energy from your breath. So you were in the process yes. of, of assisting your own body to heal. And in yes. the process of doing that, you had breakdowns, you, had, you ran into things about yourself that you had forgotten about, but the body didn't forget. Because all that yes. stuff is, um, it's loaded in the nervous system. Yes. And, and, and when you begin to consciously breathe, you're able to free that out of the yes. nervous system. So you're working yes. for yourself and your body's working for you. I just wanted people to, to, to hear that particular piece, that you were participating yes. in your own healing with your attention, with your mind, and with your breath. Now, most yes. people, I, I won't even say most people, I'm just say a lot of people are still waiting on the magic pill, mm. you know, or some kind of pharmaceutical or something. And you went in with your breath, your attention, your observation, and your intention, and basically recaptured the health that was already there, but covered up, covered up by injury. I, I think that's that's extremely powerful. Yeah. Um, and then you run you run into a master, Dr. Sebi, whose presence was so powerful that it, it was, and he was so receptive that it just shifted your perception almost immediately. Yeah. So that bam, I'm I'm not putting junk in my body anymore. You know, yes, yes. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to feed it nutrition. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, it's powerful. yeah. Powerful. And, and you know, it's just learning what this stuff is. You know, we say the words in a lot of cases, but we really can't conceptualize what it is. We're feeding ourselves the nutrition and and like even the, right. like nature and how nature can give us. You know, you talk about. I saw someone mention prana at the bottom. Yeah, when you go out into the the nature with trees, all that life force around you, you're breathing that in. You know, when we're getting good spring right. water, we're getting the elements back in. I always say, you know, breath is just the, you know, it's, it's the, the vapor of the minerals, 102 minerals that we need to process. You know, food is the manifestation of those minerals. And now humans, when we engage with one another to connect, we're 102 minerals connecting. That's nourishment that we need to, to live on this planet as, as powerful human beings. That's the awakening right there. That's the medicine right there to wake up to to realize what we're sitting on. It's like we're dry, we want to, we're so convinced to drive this Volvo when well, we could be in that G5 flying above these things that we're, we're, we're afraid of right now. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's, <laughs> no, we both had that same kind of enthusiasm about this. We just want people to know. You know yes. I was thinking about uh, uh, last year, I was in New York about to speak at an event and, all, and my face swelled up. It was like really big. I mean, I was able to get through the talk, but I was very uncomfortable. So when I got back to LA, I went to the dentist and I had some kind of infection in my tooth. And she did something to alleviate it, but I had to go back in a few days later and the idea was they were gonna pull the tooth. I didn't want the tooth pulled. They were gonna pull it. And I remember doing everything I was supposed to do in terms of rinsing it with salt water and doing all this stuff. And then I just said, no. I am not, this is not going to happen. And I went in and put my attention there, did my prayer, did my breath. So I went back in. She was shocked that the gum had healed. The gum, yes. the gum line, it was gone. And she yes. showed me the two x-rays. She said, this was just last week. This is, what did you do? Because the gum <laughs> had healed itself. You know what I mean? Yes. And I didn't have to have yes. a tooth pull, you know. And I said, no, I wasn't, I wasn't about to have it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, we're speaking, people need to be, they need to accept their own authority to heal themselves. It yes. doesn't mean you throw anything away from the medical tradition, from the herbalist, from, you know, uh, your chiropractor, your osteopath, you know, you use it all. But at the end game, you've got to go in and do the inner work and convince yourself that your body can heal itself. And you, you, you do what yeah. you did. You consciously breathed.
and establish that intentionality and the body and, and look at you today man yeah i see you doing your, your, your yoga asanas <laughs> now you're not only strong you're flexible flexible <laughs> yeah flexibility. Um, yes and, and you know i'm like how at this point it's like how do i want to look going forward like yogi bhajan has this phenomenal quote which also reminds me of you when we were in uh, Kemet and I would ask you every day, I would just test you every day. I'm like, how you doing? How you doing, Rev? He's like, I'm strong. <laughs> I was like, and, and you know, the thing is that like Yogi Bhajan said, you may die, but you would never grow old with a flexible spine. When we contribute, right. but see, we, we think that we walk up on it and say, okay, now body comply. But we have to put time in. We have to put uh, the investment in on a day-to-day -day basis to give the body what it needs. And what, we, what I learned is by giving the body just a little bit, it'll give you so much more in return. Again, that's why I say we're sitting on, we're sitting on this powerful entity and we're, we're slowing things down. But what our idea is, and instead of going into the depths of it and to learn what is nutrition, how, how can I feed myself? It's like, you know, I've had these conversations. I'll, I love to share the story of my mother but we have these we have these conversations through the holidays i'm like okay you're gonna you say you love someone but you're giving them this cake that has sugar diabetes in it high blood pressure in it and this is what you're calling love but i'm like i don't want that kind of love <laughs> so, so it's like these dynamics that give me give me some tough, give me some tough love give me some spinach <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's just getting, it's just learning, it just, again, going into the depths of it to realize what it is I'm looking to do, what am I creating, and that's what I'm calling the playbook, your intentions, it's the intention that you live by is the plays that you run on a day-to-day -day basis, it's how, because all these practices for me about self-mastery, you know, and right. navigating through the world to live my purpose, and, 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 you know, it goes back to the idea that it's not that life I have this, this fundamental that I've kind of landed on, that life has no purpose per se. We give purpose to life. We go through the happenings of life and we look to solve the problems that occur that we've had, right? And so realizing the, the, the problems that we've had um, are also equated to the other people's problems. Your problems are other people's problems equally. So as I begin to problem solve for myself, it ultimately begins to open up the gateway to help others solve their own problems. Right, you become an ambassador of the answer. And yes. you, carry the an you carry the answer in frequency and in, 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 in vibration. That's, that's yes. very powerful. Uh, two things, I, I don't wanna, uh, others let people know that, you know, we're coming close to the end of this interview, but we're going to do part two uh, shortly. Um, because we know you guys, you guys' uh, attention span sometimes is a little, a little short. So <laughs> they look like they're engaging, though, they, they, Doctor. They, they they look like they're engaging with us. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look, they're writing things and stuff. But yeah. uh, I want two things. Tell us about your book. I don't want, I don't want to leave without them knowing about your 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 mindfulness playbook. You know. Yeah. Tell us about that. They can still get this on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Yeah, so the book is not out, but it's a mindfulness playbook, and it's basically a way that you can, you know, in a simple way that I feel I've created to to get you on your way to be in your own zone, to, to not only just be in your own zone, but also be your own coach. Uh, and, and it's basically uh, allowing your intention to be your playbook. And if this piece that you're creating, where you're realizing the things that I'm doing, everything that I do, is ultimately going to be in, in, in that alignment. Like everything that I do will be in alignment with what I do, what I say I'm up to, you know, for whether it be, uh, you know, love, whether it be uh, any dynamic that you come up with, you begin to realize how can I hold and create this intention and sustain this intention in my, throughout my whole life. So, and through the process, I'm also navigating the first chapter I have, uh, define your own words, because a lot of the words that we use, we're, 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 we're carrying the burdens of our past by not knowing what these words mean for ourselves. We, we, we know it as a propagandized term, but to find out what this word means for you uh, begins to make allow more clarity to happen for you. Uh, clarity equates to compassion. Compassion is the highest form of love. And so I begin to help you build your vocabulary through the process, as well as tell my story as, my, as I'm journeying through my life, trying to figure things out. And, um, and we set you on your way to, again, identify your playbook and 
again, I, I, I feel it's a really uh, good book. I, I, I've never, I never, if you would have told me I would have been writing a book, um, you know, when I was playing, I, I would have said no. Uh, <laughs> but to see it manifest and to see it here, it, it's really, I'm like, wow, that's a good book. <laughs> you know, I, I, I understand that feeling. I understand that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can, so can they get the book? Well, you can pre-order it now uh, okay. on KeithMitchell59.com, uh, and I, I do have meditations there, but I, as well, uh, so you can kind of get familiar with my my voice with it. Uh, and but it's not out yet. Uh, we're looking at the end of October to first of November. Uh, it'll be out the mindfulness playbook, uh, eight strategies at winning at the game of life, and uh, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Very good, very good. They're, they're, send, me, send me a free copy. Of course, of course. <laughs> the, other, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, you're talking about meditation, you're talking about breath, and, and what most people don't realize, and, and uh, Bruce Lipton likes to bring this up, we, we had a good conversation about this, is that you get about 10 to 20% of your energy from food, the rest you're getting directly from the quantum field. Mm. The quantum field intermingles with your melanin, and produces the energy for for your day mm -hmm. and so by meditating and by being mindful you're actually pulling the energy that's necessary for you to live your life you have to have the the living foods the nutrition because that becomes a part of the the, 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 the way it's transmuted but you're getting most of it from the field so this yeah. is why meditation is so important yeah. meditation prayer mindfulness because most of your energy is going to come from the field anyway. And most people, those people, it, it's, it's a little above many people's vibrational uh, uh, pay grade because they can't imagine pulling their energy directly out of the field. They think they just have to take it physically, but it's actually coming from the field. And I, I, I dare say that a lot of the work that you've done on yourself with the, with the breath and mindfulness, you really extracting that powerful energy uh, to, 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 to be strong and flexible and to keep on going. Yeah. And Rev, if you don't mind, if I could compound up on that. Uh, and Please. To, to everything that you're saying is phenomenal. Uh, as we move into the evening, we, our body starts secreting the hormone of melatonin. So the body wants to relax. So a lot of reasons why we have a hard time sleeping at night, we're stressing our bodies out with what we're putting in our body. Our bodies can't process these things we're implementing. And to compound on the statement that you, you mentioned about Bruce Lipton and what he said, we take in about 90% of our oxygen when we sleep. So if you're not having sleep, good sleep at night, it's be, you know, that you're putting yourself, you're, you're not allowing that self to go into homeostasis. And homeostasis is a place that we can heal and regenerate. So we got to begin to realize how the body works you know, serotonin is, is when my body's secreting. It's when I'm at my, my warmest, the, 100, 100, uh, uh, the degrees that we need to, to stay heated to, uh, to, to process our foods at noon. We're taking in, that's when we want to have our biggest meal. And then when we go into melatonin, we want right. to Absolutely. have the body in more relaxed state. So it's, um, it's a very interesting dynamic of how it works, man. And, and we're going to we... cover some more of this. Yeah. We're going to cover some more of this because uh, we're going to have another interview. It's going to be on my app. For those of you who don't have my app yet, you just go to my website, michaelbeckwith.com, download the app. You can go to michaelbbeckwith.tv, get the app, and go to the app store, Beckwith Inspires, because we're going to continue this conversation um, uh, with that. And we've got, we've got so much more to talk about. Yes. You know, we're going to, I'm, I wouldn't want to get into, um, obviously, the times in which we're living, in which everyone is stressed, and the things that you're talking about can lead people to a greater sense of peace, even in the middle of all the tumult that's going on. Because, um, as I like to teach, in order for us to change the world, you know, we actually have to be the vibration of the world we're trying to create. We, yes. we, we cannot be uh, uh, something and mean fighting for something else. We have to actually be that frequency. And yeah. so the, the tips that you gave today allows people to be that frequency so that they can actually be architects and visionaries and evolutionaries of the world that is trying to be born right now. And yes. uh, so this, this is very, very powerful. So get, give them your, your website again. So my website is keithmitchell59.com. Uh, my IG, Instagram is keithmitchell59. 
yeah, uh, reach out to me, send me a message. I love to engage with you. I, I, I host retreats. Um, I got some really amazing projects coming up. I love to share with you about, and uh, yeah, I'm so grateful to be a service. Absolutely. I think we're going to do some things together. So yes, look forward to it. Yeah. And you, did, you just came back from Mexico, right? I did. I did. We had a Heaven. retreat in Mexico. And, right, you know, right. I'm listening to the naysayers like, no, you can't do a retreat here. I mean, those are the same people who told me I couldn't make it to the National Football League. Those are the same <laughs> people who told me I can't walk. So, you know, I got to do the totally opposite of what they say. <laughs> it's, always, it's always the big day telling you what you can't do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I remember when I was first establishing Agape, and I, and I, you know, I had a vision, and I was called. And I remember going, I was, I was running a, uh, I, was the, I was the director of training for this prayer ministry. And I remember I went to tell the director that I was going to be leaving because I had to start my own community. And she said, where are you going to start it? And I said, I've been, I've been told I'm supposed to start in Santa Monica. And she says, why don't you start it for your own people? And I said, and I said for short people? <laughs> and she said, oh, oh I, didn't, I didn't mean anything by it. I didn't mean anything by it. And then I was speaking to another minister. And he said, you know, three or four people have tried to establish works there. And they failed. And you're a black man. You can't go into that community and establish a metaphysical community. I said, you don't understand. This is not my thought. Yes. This is what came to me from the spirit to start it there. I got to follow. And then, yes. of course, it became really big there. And then we had to move because we kept getting larger and larger. But the big they was always yes. telling me what I couldn't do. Yes. And I was always yes. saying, it's not me. I'm not trying to do this. I'm being guided. And I yes. have to follow the guidance. Yeah. And, and so, I'm glad you did, man. I'm glad you did. And you're a pioneer. And I, I, I admire your work. And I, you know, give me something to look forward to look up to. So I, I'm just I just want you to know that. Uh, and I don't think it's shared enough between men. Uh, but but I my my heart goes to you. And I appreciate you. I adore you. And, I, and I'm, I'm so grateful to be here with you. Hey, man, I'm so glad you said yes. And um We'll be with each other shortly and continue this conversation and that will be, I'm telling everybody now, it will be on my app. You, you just get the app. You can get the premium package. You can get on the app for free. You know, you can start. How, whatever your financial situation is, get the app and, and um, you'll be privy to part two of my conversations that I have on the IG Live, as well as some other things. You also need to know, those who are listening, I'll be doing a uh, virtual meditation retreat on my app, a three-day retreat, four hours a day, two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. I have Guapale doing powerful music. I have Miss Lyra from South Africa doing music, and I'm going to guide you through the meditative process, and, and it'll be live at night where I have Q&A. So that's going to be on my app as well. So, you know, here we are, two brothers doing the best we can to bring about a great degree of enlightenment to the planet. And um, Keith... So glad to be with you today, man. Yes, yes. Likewise, likewise. And I will we'll talk shortly. Sounds good. Bye. Beautiful. Bye. God bless everybody. That was Brother Keith Mitchell. I'm, I hope you enjoyed our conversation. Uh, he's a, a shining example of actually putting these spiritual principles into practice, moving from a prognosis that he might not be able to walk again all the way now to uh, being a powerful uh, individual that practices and teaches yoga, mindfulness, conscious breathing, nutrition. And so uh, you too can make a mighty difference in your own life. We'll talk to you soon. Have a bright day. Let people know this is going on pretty much every Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Have a bright day.